Hey guys, I am, and I am with, first video I've not said it, so I'm going to do my best not to say it in this video. Uh, this is video number three in the Todd Driscoll series. If you've not seen these, jump right there, and that little eye, if you're watching this on YouTube, will take you to video one of this series. So Todd is a fisheries biologist for the Texas Park and Wildlife. He is what's known as a district fisheries biologist, I believe is the correct terminology. So he oversees a number of lakes in East Texas, uh, and specific to our conversation, mostly is Toledo and Rayburn. But there's a bunch of other lakes, and you'll hear that in video one. He talks about what he oversees. So by the way, and I apologize, I know it's been more than a week between video two and three. It will not be that long between video three and four. I believe we have enough footage for at least three more videos. And in this particular video, Todd gets much deeper into questions you guys ask. And I made notes just to let you know kind of what's in this video. We're going to start out immediately since we ended video two talking about the harvest rate of, of keeper bass uh, in Toledo Bend, meaning the number of fish that are actually kept and consumed versus released. Uh, since we talked about that at the end of video two, video three begins with the harvest rate of with Rayburn, which I think will surprise most of us. Um, and then we talk also about do we really need to take bass out of lakes. It's, it's something I've heard my entire life. Oh, I'm catching too many little fish. We need to pull some fish out of the lake. The fish are stunted. So we're going to talk about that from a fisheries biologist. Uh, and then we're also going to circle back and talk a little bit about Toledo Bend and the possibility. One, one, of, the, one of my viewers had asked, uh, whether we would be able to or whether there were any talks about changing the limits over there. So we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, he's going to talk about Nakanish, which is, and I hope I'm pronouncing that pro appropriately or properly. Uh, that's a lake there uh, near Lufkin uh, that really sounds like it's potentially a trophy lake. I know Major League Fishing went there, I believe, a couple of years ago. Um, Something I didn't know about that one of the viewers had asked me to ask Todd about, which was, and he actually covered it without me asking the question, which was great, was uh, where the sheer Lone Star Lunker fry go. So I thought that was a really interesting conversation. Uh, another viewer had asked specifically about tiger bass, so we're going to cover that in this one. And then we're also going to cover growth rate. So I think this is a really interesting video. Uh, this video ends right before we start talking about shock surveys, which there's a bunch of information. I had no idea about shocking surveys, so we'll jump into that in video four. So let's go right to our you know, topic. By the way, let's hear the Rayburn numbers before. Yeah, we yeah, on. yeah. For comparison, in Rayburn's higher than most people would, would want to think or believe. Over that same time period, Rayburn's harvest rate ranged from 25 to 40 percent. Going down? It, 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 it varied. Okay. I don't recall the exact... Uh, Three samples ago, uh, well, I don't recall the exact number, but uh, the, the midpoint, it kind of peaked and it went down again. It just varied. There wasn't a, a consistent trend up or down. Okay. So one of the viewers asked a great question, and, it, and you answered it to me offline as well, which was, do we typically need to harvest some percent of the fish out of the lake? Right? Do you need to go out there and catch a bunch of 14-inch Kentuckys or 14-inch largemouth and take them out? to make room for those fish to get bigger. It varies. Now, very small lake, like less than 100 acres or pond management, that's very common. You know, you, bass might get stunted, overpopulated. I've been in our large reservoirs. I've never seen a case in all my career being a fisheries biologist where a large reservoir needed more bass harvest. That's why taxpayers pay guys like me is to continually monitor that. That's why we need to know that, right? We look at what we call relative weight. That's just the body condition of the fish. That's why we weigh the fish. We compare that to kind of a known standard and give it a number. Okay. We look at body condition, but more importantly, look at growth rate. That's more of a longer period of history of the fish. And uh, by no means, in any of the lakes I manage, or in fact, any of the lakes that I'm familiar with talking with other biologists in the state, let's put it this way, it'd be a very rare case in any of our reservoirs over 2,000 acres in size to where a biologist would really need to encourage more harvest. Point blank, unquestionably, at Rayburn and Toledo, I would just put it this bluntly. Any fish kept just takes away from fishing quality, if you want to look at it that way. We, we do not need 
more bass harvested. And I hear that some from harvest-minded anglers. Mm -hmm. If you want to harvest fish, that, that that's your prerogative. Absolutely. And, I, know, it, and, and, and so let's go on record here. Neither one of us are beating guys up that are doing that. That's their right, right to do that. Right. But it also, it goes back to mine and your conversation before, I want kids to experience the kind of fishing that Rayburn and Toledo I've had the pleasure of experiencing for the last 20 years. Your kids, that's my right. kids, y'all's kids. And so we need to be thinking about that. And I don't know how that chain reaction works, but if you take a fish out, you're taking that fish's offspring out too, right? Yeah. So at some point, you got to start thinking that a 70% kill rate is just way too high. Even a 40% kill rate is. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's just that simple. You know, I don't know, it, it's hard to put a number on exactly how many more bass the Rayburn and Toledo support, but, but, but way higher. Let's find have. out. Yeah, 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 let's try. You, let's have a video in five years yeah. where you go, you guys go catch some fish. Yeah, and put them uh, in the again, you know, state law, I mean, our state rig on, on largemouth bass is 14 inches and in, in five fish at Rayburn. It's eight fish at Toledo. It will compromise between the states. But if you want to harvest legal limited bass, you know, you're legal to do so, obviously. But I find that some anglers try to justify that to themselves by, by the question you ask. Hey, we need some harvest to have a healthy fishery. Catching a lot of no. little fish. Yeah, I'm catching nothing but little fish. Or, hey, I'm just keeping the 14 or 15 inch fish. Well, a 10 pound female bass wasn't 14 or 15 inches at some point in its life, you know. That's, I'm, I'm always, and I, I see this with the guys all the time. Guy catches an eight pounder and releases it and it's his personal best. I love that. 12 pound personal best, release that fish. Stacy caught that big fish down here and released it. Give somebody else a chance to catch it. Matter of fact, if you look, uh, interestingly, of the top 25 bass ever caught, one of them is the same fish twice. Yeah. That dotty fish out of Lake Dixon out in California. Wasn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, fish. you can look at uh, some of our uh, slot limit or 16-inch maximum lakes, like, like Kurth, uh, Nacogdoches, Lake Nacogdoches, lakes where we're essentially protecting, you know, the 16-inch max lakes, we're protecting every fish over 16 inches. And you can see the... Uh, the, the population samples from those lakes have a far higher number of four, five, six plus pound fish than Raven and Toledo do. It just you know, goes to show when you knock down that harvest pressure or the term related mortality pressure, just how much of a difference that can make. Uh, is there a chance that the Toledo Bend limit size will change or uh, count, creel count will change, go from eight to five? We, we are talking about it, both our agency and Louisiana agency. Uh, the only reason it's eight fish is because of a compromise between our agency. And I don't recall exactly what year the 14-inch eight-fish bag was standardized Lake Wadi Toledo. It was a good many years ago. I remember weighing the 12-fish limit to weigh nine pounds over there. Years and years and years ago. I mean, catching lots and lots of little tiny yeah, fish. Yeah. Mid-80s or so would be what I'd guess mm -hmm. without looking it up when that regulation Yeah, was. I'm not old. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? I've got you down 10 rabbit holes already, so that's okay. <laughs> well, it's something to do with the, uh, oh, the, uh, you know, the, the regulations there due, due to uh, standardization and, and, and give and take from each agency. You know, they adopted our 14-inch fish, 14-inch uh, length limit. If we would come their way a little bit, their statewide bag limit is 10. Oh, I didn't know that. Their statewide limit on largemouth bass is no minimum 10-fish bag. They compromised on the 14 if we gave some on the sure. five fish. That's the only reason it is eight fish. It's a compromise between our agency and Louisiana. If the was solely within our borders, it would have been five fish uh, back years ago. Right. It makes perfect sense for Texas Parks and Wildlife. Louisiana is exploring on their side. Uh, we're asking uh, angler opinion questions on our Creole survey right now about what people, uh, what their opinion is about moving from an eight fish bag to a five. Is that online or is that only if you get approached on the water or at a ramp? Right now we're just doing it online, but you know, historically I've done uh, uh, online surveys. So it is online now or is oh, it? I'm sorry, I might have misspoken there. Right now we're only asking during our okay. Creole surveys. Okay. Well, we've done online surveys. I, I put them up on the Texas Fishing Forum. You've maybe seen them up there. I mean, Lake Nackenish Rig, I think was the last one we put up there. I mean, we, yeah, we use all kinds of avenues. Uh, to get angler opinion. I mean, bottom line, guys like me are here to manage a resource for what you folks as anglers want, what opportunity you want, given it makes sense with the biological data. For example, 
for practical purposes, you know, Rayburn and Toledo have really high trophy fish potential inherently, but because of, of, of the popularity of tournament fishing and the economic impacts of tournament fishing, we essentially manage Rayburn and Toledo as tournament fisheries. If you were to put a, let's say a 16 inch maximum on Sam Rayburn, good grief. Let it ride 10 years, what would the lake produce? Uh, it, I, and I, I still believe that the lake record, if not the state record, lives on a pole under the 147 bridge. It's got everything they need, yeah. it's got current, it's got depth, and it's got so many crappie and shad and brim to eat. Uh, if you told me, Ken, I'm going to shoot you if you don't catch, go catch a 10-pounder, I'd spend the day on the bridge pilots trying to catch a 10-pounder. Yeah. Now, I've never caught a big one off of it, but that just, that right. seems like to me where there would be one. Yeah. You know, same thing on Toledo, yeah. on the big yeah. bridge there. So. Of course, we also try to, pro you know, within each biologist management district, we try to provide diversity of opportunity. We've got 14-inch link limits on Rayburn and Toledo, but most of the other prominent bass fisheries in, in my district, we've got pretty restrictive rigs on. And we only put them in place if the vast majority of anglers want us to. I mean, we do our due diligence asking all kinds of opinions or you know, opinion questions. On Kurth, we have a 16-inch maximum. Uh, Lake Nacogdoches, Lake Nacogdoches, we've got 16-inch maximum. You're excited about that lake, aren't you? Lake Nacogdoches? It's, uh, you know, when you're talking about Rayburn having everything it needs, Nacogdoches certainly does. We as an agency, we've done everything we can do to maximize the trophy potential of Lake Nacogdoches. How now, should, I should know uh, 700 acres, okay, I knew something like that. Yeah. But uh, we've done everything we can. It's up to Mother Nature now. You know, the, the habitat's great. Uh, it's kind of a hard lake to fish, yeah. but I think that kind of adds to the trophy potential. Look how hard Fork was to fish when it was brown. So kind of the same dynamic on a smaller scale. All you had to do was get within 100 yards of me and hear me cussing about being hung up on the stump at Fork in the 80s. It was crazy. So. But, you know, we've stocked it heavily with Florida bass and Sherlunker, Fingerling specifically. Uh, Explain what that is. Those are, the, the, the Sherlunker Fingerlings are, are, are Fingerlings produced from our Sherlunker donations of fish over 13 pounds. So I would imagine those get very specific lakes. Yes. And kind of backtracking a little bit, you know, as an agency, we're trying to get to where our entire hatchery broodfish supply, Florida bass, are all Sherlunker offspring. So of, are there, I'm assuming, are there broodfish in the, if y'all never seen the hatchery here, by the way, y'all have a couple of days a week you can do a tour. It's, it's pretty yeah. impressive to pull in here. Do some of these ponds? Yes, yeah, the Florida bass brood fish are, are, are held over. Yeah, okay. we keep them. Can you fish in that one? <laughs> Probably not. Kind of a really big story yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll know what happened. All right, let's see what else we want to talk about. So one of our guys asked about the tiger bass, and you said that's something you don't know. And in fact, I've stumped you twice, I think. That and the five-inch fish we'll talk about in a second. But talk what you know about the tiger strain, and, and I think I've got your curiosity up about it as well, or they are guys that do. Yeah, the... Uh, you know, the name tiger bass, it's, it comes from, I believe, a, a private fish hatchery in the southeast, maybe Alabama. They maybe even have that, the, the, the name trademarked. But uh, looking at their website, it, it, it's, a, it's an F1 cross, a first generation cross. When a native, that's native, what that means, by the way. I didn't know that's what that meant. Well, it's not what the scientific community uses. Okay. If you look at the, uh, the, the private hatchery's website, uh, they've maybe done some selective breeding to get, if you will, a per, per their outlook on a, a, a special F1. I mean, the standard Florida uh, Northern Cross is just, we just labeled a, a, an F1, okay. first generation hybrid between a Florida and a Northern bass. I tried to get a hold of our geneticist this morning. He's out on vacation. But I know he'll have some good insight on that because he's, he, well, he, he does tremendous work. You know, he's done a, a lot of things looking at performance of, of pure Floridas versus hybrids. And, and really kind of led us down a good path in terms of our, our hatchery production of Floridas. So I'm really anxious to hear what he has to say about it. Uh, because I know I talked to one of the uh, folks he works with down in the genetics lab, and they said, oh, yeah, we've bounced that around a good bit. So I know we'll have some, some good thoughts for us on, on the tiger bass. So I stumped you on. So one of the questions was, how do I catch a four- or five-inch fish in October and November? What's our growth rate for a fish typically in Texas or in Rayburn's later? Well, typically, uh, seven or eight inches 
you know, that, that first year of their life when they're, I mean, the mortality is really high that first year. But once they get through that first winter into that next spring is age one, the mortality rate drastically declines by then. And typically, I mean, it can vary probably anywhere from five to ten inches in length and on average around seven or eight as they enter that first spring. So is a keeper two years old? On average, they're typically anywhere from a year and a half to uh, three years of age. Slow growth, three and a half to four, but we very rarely see that here in East Texas. Right. It's typically a year and a half to two and a half years of age when they hit that 14 inch mark. And then is there a growth rate, a three pounder, four pounder, five pounder, or is it just continue to vary wildly? Well, it gets real variable past that, especially if you throw you know, male and female differences in there. Uh, male bass, uh, we've seen it at some of our real restrictive lakes, Lake Nacogdoches, for example. We actually aged a 15-inch bass that was 12 years old there. It was a male. Just genetically, it just shut it down at 15 inches. Wow. You know, a large male, an average large male fish is four pounds or so. I mean, they'll get a little bigger than that, but a you know, big male is four or five pounds. Yeah. I, and sure, we, I didn't we, know they got that big, actually. I thought three pounds was about as big as a male gets. Average, that's probably true, but you know we've all uh, those of us bed fish a lot. I mean, you know, I've seen males five, six pounds. It's rare. See, I would have thought it was a female. Size. Well, you know, you you just never know. You make the assumption when two bass are on the bed, one's a male, one's a female. I guess you don't truly know. Right? Dumb question. <laughs> Can you look at a fish and tell if it's a male or female? The uh, trained hatchery personnel can during the pre-spawn period, okay. just looking at the vent. But me and you. Can I? I mean, we, uh, hatchery technicians could take us out there, and in 30 minutes, you and I could. But I couldn't right now without them showing. Let's, let's put it that way. But other than that, externally, there's no way to tell outside of that period. So when a guy points his fish and it's peeing on me, like they do all the time in the springtime, I can't say that's a male. <laughs> that's a moon pipe thing. That's one of his favorite things to do. Look at this fish. It's like, dude, stop. You're killing me here. So we just took this completely off the scientific yeah. route right there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what else we got here? <clears throat> so you shock fish. Okay. So that's our video three. Like I said earlier, we'll jump right into video four, uh, talking about electroshock surveys. As I get a lab, really wanting to get loved on uh, here in the next. I'll do it within within a week. I'll get it up within a week. I promise. Uh, one other note, thanks so much for those of you who uh, wished my mother a happy 80th birthday on Facebook a few weeks ago. Uh, just so you know, uh, her present was a night vision binoculars. You got a pretty funny mom with some little night vision binoculars to, to watch the wildlife in the field outside of her home at night. So just FYI, if anybody sees an 80-year-old woman in a golf cart around Kilgore or Longview driving down the road at night in the dark, with night vision binoculars, will you please call me and let's get her home? Because, Mama, you don't need to be out there driving around with those. Because I actually got her the ones like the military wears that you can flip down and be hands-free. So <laughs> my 80-year-old mother now has night vision binoculars. So there you go. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, I also have an Instagram channel. I have a Facebook page. Uh, please uh, enjoy. I put some different content on each one of those. So if you enjoy this, please uh, please join me on Facebook and Instagram as well. It's all under just Ken Smith Fishing, so I'm really easy to find. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. If you don't subscribe, I really appreciate it if you do. Uh, I still have about 65% of my viewers are not subscribers, and I know some guys just don't have an account where they can subscribe. But if you do subscribe, you can click that bell, and anytime I post a new video, you'll get a notice so you can watch it uh, pretty quick after it gets posted. So again... Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys here in just a few days.